have been a uh, democratic process in Mexico has improved in the past years, but we wanted to make it better. We don't want to stay there. So we want to help institutions to achieve uh, better democracy and stronger uh, ties with the, the citizens. Transparency and, uh, and being open to collaborate. I think that's, that's the key. Uh, uh, we were very tr uh, transparent since the beginning. Uh, Andres, uh, my co-founder, and Jorge was also our founder. Um, we actually, when we, when we approach the civil organizations, we always tell them that this is a 100% uh, citizen-centric approach. We are not receiving money from anybody. We are putting money from our pockets. This is how we're funding the process. And this is just, just an experiment. If we want to, we wanted to collaborate. So at the beginning, they knew that we didn't have an agenda, but to improve uh, the democratic process in Mexico. So transparency is very important. Also collaboration. We didn't want to do it uh, ourselves. We wanted to, do, to use um, the network effect that uh, organizations have created along the last uh, 20 years. So we know that every organization, they have their own, uh, have built their own networks and, and they have their own processes. So we just wanted, uh, wanted to use the technology to improve their own internal process. So collaboration is very important. So don't keep the platform closed. Uh, open the platform, invite anybody, no matter you know if they have different agendas. At the end of the day, they have one goal, which is to, to achieve better democracy. Uh, citizen engagement and to get uh, EU and Mexico involved in, to, in democratic processes. I think one of the most uh, biggest problems that any society can have is the apathy of young, you know, younger generations in terms of uh, participating and co-creating with governments. Uh, we believe in this new new kind of government. Uh, it's not e-government anymore. It's we call it we government. People are actually collaborating with institutions and decision makers and their leaders to uh, create a better democracy and a better society. So my main goal was to um, get people involved in this in this kind of processes. Uh, I think we have, you know, very good conditions. We have a plurality of parties. Uh, for the first time, um, there was a, a big change in the. Uh, for the first time in Mexico, we had a, what we can call democracy. Uh, uh, we had uh, two political parties, three political parties, two of them very strong, and um, that gives a sense of um, competition. Uh, so every political party wants to be the best. Uh, so I think that gave us, you know, the leverage to uh, pull this up, because uh, we created an environment where anybody, any citizen, no matter the, the political party they belong to, they could participate and uh, actually monitor and uh, report anything that what they were saying, you know, no matter the political affiliation. First of all, uh, we wanted to. Yeah. To, to get involved, um, Mexicans that were they were like voting for the first time in their life, like 18 year old to 35, 36. Uh, but at the end of the day, we noticed that uh, also some other audiences were interested. For example, my father is like 60 something year old, and he is a very big, I mean, very big fan of William Zabo. He, he, I mean, I, never, I mean, the last time I went to William Zabo was probably a month ago. He's, he actually goes every two days and checks, you know, new reports. And telling me, oh, have you seen this report that is got that came from? So uh, at the beginning, it was, very, uh, it was directed to, to young uh, audiences, and that's why we used, you know, Luchador and this kind of um, pop uh, culture references. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, once the content um, evolved and provided more value, so people, older generations were actually intrigued and interested, you know, in uh, reading these kind of reports. Uh, at the beginning, you know, because we were like, a, it was a citizen-centric movement, they were, uh, there was this mistrust. Uh, why, why are you guys doing this? Why, why, is it, why is it free? Who's funding it? Is it like a CIA kind of operation? And, and, and more like, and it was like, no, you know, it was, I mean, you, you, you can use it if you want. Um, but the other, uh, the other um, aspect of that was uh, one of the, the biggest organizations in Mexico told us that uh, they didn't want to participate with us because we were not following their uh, line or their agenda. And we said, we have no agenda. We don't, we don't know what you're talking about. So they said, okay, you know, we're just going to pass this time. We're, we're not cooperating with you guys. But the next, they saw the success of this, of this project. And the next election, like one year later, they actually called us and they apologized for that. And right now, it's one, they, they are one of our biggest partners in Mexico. 
So um, at the beginning was pretty much like mistrust, or this, uh, they were afraid of change. Uh, for the first time, they were able to collaborate with citizens in the way they hadn't done it before. So I think that was amazing. I think it's um, by sticking to the principle that uh, our goal is democracy. We don't have any other goal. It's just one goal. I think when organizations, they get distracted with it, or they as actually um, think uh, their objective as goals, uh, or they don't know how to differentiate objectives along the way and goals, they, things can, can get bad. For example, I've seen that in, the, in Venezuela. Uh, I had the opportunity of collaborating with some organizations um, that they wanted to implement a platform like Cuidamos el Voto. I told them, you know, your first, uh, the goal that you should follow is um, it's democracy. But we had, they told me, we had different objectives. And I said, no, oh, well, you have like, different objectives internally, but you have one goal. Uh, and the fact that they didn't put, or they didn't share the same goal, or they thought the objectives were the goal, um, let them to um, they divided the movement and instead of having just one platform they had five platforms so um, dividing your uh, your network is never a good, a good idea when you want to achieve a goal so I think smart is very important to have a clear message a clear goal a very simple message uh, in order to to spread out you know your and the fact that we don't have any agenda, we don't have any political affiliation, and we just want to achieve a better democracy, it's very simple to pass the message, and it's very simple to engage more people in collaboration. Well, basically, uh, the interesting thing about Cuidemos uh, el Voto is that it's, uh, right now it's uh, an ad hoc structure. It creates itself when a political uh, event is, is coming. Uh, the past two elections, I haven't been involved at all. Uh, just you know, as an advisor. Um, the last election, uh, a group of Mexicans uh, uh, from Puebla, uh, young students and very young people, they actually uh, wrote, wrote an email to that we use with them as a lot of and I would say, yeah, of course, it's free, you know, anybody can use it. So they organized the whole election monitoring, they trained their own um, reporters, and they were officially recognized by the electoral authority in Mexico because they uh, passed the required training. So it was like a 100% student movement, and they were able to actually, through our contacts and through the, all the, the partners, we were able to uh, create this uh, ad hoc community for that specific event. And we're hoping you know, that um, we're going to reactivate this, uh, this project and this uh, for the upcoming presidential elections. We're going to use different technology, the one that, uh, we're developing internally right now for that. But the most important thing is that the network we created can be activated anytime and, and anywhere because there are people engaged and they believe in, 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 the, in the project. So this is the most exciting part of the equation. Just do it. I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, if you think that you can do it, I mean, first of all, it's, uh, security is very important. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an issue that we are actually very careful. Uh, you need to be aware about your, your political context, about uh, your uh, social context too, and uh, understand that technology is never a silver bullet. You have to have a strategy uh, that supports the use of technology. So before going into um, or starting any project, be sure that you understand the problem you want to address, be sure you understand the message, you have the right message to pass, look for collaboration, uh, try to join forces. Uh, divide and conquer is a method that um, people have been used you know, to uh, defeat movements around the world. So create a group, create a strategy, create a group, uh, a message you can pass. And also, but more importantly, it's uh, be sure that uh, the technology you're using is secure, and uh, be careful about uh, disclosing, you know, the identity of your reporters if you are in this under this uh, context. Uh, if not, if you're if the, if, if, if the movement you're gonna you're gonna create is uh, just doesn't pass, doesn't pass any risk to your security, then just go ahead and create it, and uh, but always with the right strategy.